Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I want to show you and I want to react to a video uh, that actually Tim pointed out with uh, this tweet. So thank you, Tim, for uh, pointing it out. It's an independent review of many different rockets uh, that are coming online. And it gives a very, very good viewpoint of, you know, what purpose certain rockets uh, serve. And it actually speaks very highly of Neutron and the innovation of Neutron and how competitive it's going to be. So it really helps to put things in perspective as a Rocket Lab investor. So I think it's a very important video. So without further ado, I wanna start. And the full video, it's really worth the watch, is going to be in the description box below. So let's get going. Good afternoon on today's Angry Bulletin. So most observers in the spaceflight arena believe that this is going to be the dominant rocket of the future, at least for the next decade or so. But is this actually the case? I mean, there's a whole lot of new rockets coming out, many of them from companies that are quite innovative. Yeah, they may not have the payload of Starship, but does the versatility and flexibility of some of these smaller rockets actually give them the edge, especially for what the market is going to need for the next few years? All of this and more coming at you on the Angry Astronaut. So this is how the video starts. Then it goes over a lot of rockets. And here is the part that talks about Neutron. But perhaps the most important factor when we're talking about the competitive edge is innovation. Who has the most innovative rocket? And once again, I'm going to make SpaceX fanboys absolutely livid with this conclusion. But Rocket Lab and the Neutron, in my opinion, is the most innovative new rocket that's coming out. There are so many features to this rocket that are just incredibly cool, and they really stand out from the competition. For example, look how short this rocket is compared to the competition. Way shorter than Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, and absolutely tiny compared to New Glenn and especially Starship. However, in terms of its capabilities, it really stands up to the competition. It can carry up to 13 metric tons up to low Earth orbit inside a 5 meter fairing. That actually is a similar capability or at least the same capability that's necessary to put the Crew Dragon into orbit to rendezvous with the International Space Station. It would also theoretically be able to send up a spacecraft like the Dream Chaser into low Earth orbit and a wide variety of other cargoes. When it comes right down to it, when the Falcon 9 transports most of its cargoes to low Earth orbit, very seldom are they any heavier than 13 metric tons anyway, unless it's a Starlink constellation, which is, of course, a SpaceX cargo and something that other customers aren't going to be carrying anyway. Another innovation of the Neutron is the fact that the fairing is self-contained. It's not a fairing that's going to have to be jettisoned. Instead, it simply opens up to deploy the payload, a payload that's being carried on the lightest second stage ever created, a second stage stage that's made out of lightweight carbon fiber, increasing the amount of payload that it can deploy not only to low Earth orbit, but also to interplanetary destinations. Because Neutron is making use of Methalox fuel and Methalox engines for its second stage, and because everything is so lightweight, this thing is going to be able to dispatch much larger cargoes to interplanetary destinations and the moon than any rocket this size has a right to do and that is one thing that makes it really innovative in addition to that because the fairing is self-contained only the tiny second stage is being expended 
everything else will be reused, making it more reusable than Falcon 9, more reusable than Falcon Heavy, more reusable than New Glenn, more reusable than just about anything except for Starship. But here's another big difference. Starship is such a colossal rocket that it requires an enormous exclusion zone to operate. Not so with Neutron. This rocket, in spite of its substantial payload capabilities, is still small enough to where it will be able to operate from relatively modest launch facilities. In other words, launch facilities right off the coast of Virginia and Wallops Island. So, really, lots of amazing features to Neutron, something that will make this little bitty rocket the dark horse of the 2020s, and something that may give Rocket Lab a real competitive edge with a wide variety of customers, the kinds of customers we're likely to have for the next 10 years. It's going to be a long time before the spaceflight industry really supports 100 metric ton payload. It will eventually, and when it does, Starship will definitely come into its own. But that could be a while in coming, and in the meantime, Neutron is going to be a serious competitor. That being said, who is the winner in this competition? Yeah, so there you go. That was the information about Neutron. Many things that I didn't even think about. So, for example, that the vehicle, because, you know, it's a carbon composite that uh, New Zealand and Peter especially has a lot of expertise in, makes the rocket so light that despite it's much bigger, it competes with much, um, sorry, despite it's much smaller, it competes with much bigger rockets. Uh, it's more reusable than Falcon 9, more reusable than Falcon Heavy. And the only thing in front of it is uh, Starship. So that was very interesting. Um, then that the exclusion zone. So it, it's going to be much easier to fly this thing because it's so tiny. And I think Peter Beck made such a good strategic decision that he, he opted for Wallops and not um, the Kennedy Space Center or uh, Wendem Wend Wendenburg, California. I don't know how to say it. Probably butcher that. Uh, because instead of, you know, being a small fish in a big pond and, you know, getting in queue where, you know, everybody else is trying to launch, he went to a rather um, humble, you know, spaceport that actually is still big enough to support Neutron. And he's the big fish there in a very small pond. And that is going to give a very big competitive edge. So I was very excited uh, when I saw this video. Again, really recommend that you watch the full video. Let me know in the comments what you thought, if this was useful to you, and if you want to support the channel. Uh, I have a channel membership, and you get access to the valuations that I do, and you know, there's different uh, levels to the membership that you can check it out, but it's mostly about supporting the channel, which I'm very thankful for, so thank you so much. But the most important is that you're here, you're subscribed, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.